Hi, everybody. This is Jimmy DeYoung. Welcome to Prophecy Today video. Today, we're going to be focusing on the Jewish feast, and in particular, how Jesus Christ will fulfill those feasts. We talked with Dave Dolan. He was in Jerusalem. He has just completed the 25-hour fast. He gave us an update as to what has been going on in Israel during this special high holy day for the Jewish people. We had a pre-recorded interview with Itamar Marcus, and as a Jew, he told us how he was preparing for Yom Kippur and what they would do during the 25 hours. Steve Herzig, the National Director for Friends of Israel, actually got in into a discussion with us about Yom Kippur and how that has been played out today since there is no temple for the high priest to go into the Holy of Holies and put the blood, the sacrificial blood, on the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant. Well, Yom Kippur, a very, very special day for the Jewish people. It's the sixth of the seven Jewish feasts. Leviticus chapter 23 explains all of the Jewish feast. You have four in the spring, you have three in the fall. In the spring, you have Passover first, followed by unleavened bread, and then first fruits would be on the Sunday after the Sabbath, and Pentecost some 50 days later. In the fall, you have the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, the new year for the Jewish people, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and Sukkot, that's the Hebrew terminology, or Tabernacles. The first three feasts were fulfilled by the person of Jesus Christ, and the fourth one by the Holy Spirit, which Jesus promised would come. Jesus Christ died on Passover some 2,000 years ago. He was buried on unleavened bread. And he resurrected on first fruits. Indeed, he fulfilled those first three feasts. Now remember in John 16, he promised that when he went, he would send the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to come and teach us things to come, the Holy Spirit in all of aspects of his ministry. Well, on that 50th day after first fruits, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit did come down as recorded in Acts chapter 2. Now, having fulfilled the first four feasts, the spring feast, then Jesus Christ will fulfill to be consistent with the teaching that he gave the Jewish people through Moses back in Leviticus chapter 23, and then the end result of Jesus Christ fulfilling those first four feasts, the spring feast, he will fulfill the last three feasts as well. The Bible tells us that in Matthew 24, after Jesus Christ has come back to the earth, verse 31, he turns and tells the angel to blow the trumpet and call all the Jews in from all four winds and every part of heaven. They are to come to Jerusalem. That's what the Feast of Trumpets is all about. It's uh, one of those feasts that when the Jewish people want to celebrate it, they go to the Temple Mount in the city of Jerusalem. They take their shofars out and they blow it in honor of what took place 5,771 years ago since the new year for the Jewish people is 5771. That's when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And without going into further detail, that Garden of Eden, the Temple Mount, in the city of Jerusalem, that stone under the Dome of the Rock, the foundation stone where every Orthodox Jew will tell you, was the location where indeed Jesus Christ brought Adam and Eve into existence. That's the Temple Mount in the city of Jerusalem. So Jesus Christ, standing on the Temple Mount, tells the angel to blow the shofar, blow the trumpet, and call all the Jews to that location. He's calling a solemn assembly, which Leviticus chapter 23 details is one of the responsibilities. What's going to happen then? Jesus Christ will rebuild the city of Jerusalem, making it 2,500 square miles, according to the book of Ezekiel. Also, the Temple Mount will be one square mile. And Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12, says that Jesus Christ will build a temple on the Temple Mount. It will be a 21-story high edifice. It will be the Messiah's temple, the one that he will rule and reign from during the Millennial Kingdom. It will be a fulfillment of the Davidic covenant to the Jewish people, where God promised King David many years ago that indeed there would be a temple on the Temple Mount and a Messiah, the son of King David, or one of the sons, ultimately, his heritage, 
would be the ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, from that temple. That will be the fulfillment of Jesus Christ returning, and he returns after he comes back from the Battle of Armageddon, going to uh, the location of Petra, and gathering in the Jewish people. Isaiah 63 says he marches from the Jezreel Valley over to Petra, where he has prepared a place to protect the Jewish people in the last three and a half years, comes by way of the east, that's Petra, east of Jerusalem, over the Mount of Olives, across the Kidron Valley, into the eastern gate, and into the Holy of Holies. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 says, The High priest in times past, once a year we go into the Holy of Holies, but now in the end of time, Jesus Christ goes one time into the Holy of Holies. He does that on Yom Kippur. That's the day of national salvation. And Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 3 says, or excuse me, chapter 3 verse 9 says that in a day the Jewish people turn to Jesus Christ. Four days after that, you have the Feast of Tabernacles in the agenda for the three fall feasts. And that's when the kingdom begins. Jesus Christ will set up his kingdom to rule and reign forever. Matthew 16 was a a precursor to that when the disciples, the inner circle, Peter, James, and John, went on the Mount of Transfiguration, saw Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 17, seated there with uh, Moses and Elijah in their resurrected, glorified bodies in the kingdom. Jesus had said, some will not die before you see me in my kingdom. That will happen. Well, what's going to lead up to that? Matthew 24, verses 4 to 31, talks about The appearance of Antichrist, wars and rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes in divers places, the temple being up with the abomination of desolation taking place. You can read Matthew 24, verses 4 to 31. It's the lead up to the return of Jesus Christ. Indeed, we are living in that time when these three fall feasts can be fulfilled by the person of Jesus Christ. But remember, seven years before he comes back, we have the rapture of the church when Jesus shouts, the archangel shouts, the trumpet of God sounds, and we leave this place. With all the discussion we've had on the broadcast today, it's looking like Matthew 24, 4 to 31 is about to be fulfilled. Christ is about to come, and that means the rapture could happen at any moment. And having said that, nothing left for me to say, except let's keep looking up until... 